I can't believe we are halfway through half a dozen P2Bs from ASUS. Three of them are functional again, with minor work remaining. And one even received a modification that allows us to use Coppermine CPUs. Today we will continue with a fourth P2B, a board in good condition considering how bad the previous boards were. It's nice that the ASUS chip is not affected by corrosion this time, but that could have easily been a different story. A handful of traces right next to the chip suffered catastrophic damage. I can't help but think that something must have tripped on those boards, causing the copper to dissolve because the damage is concentrated in small areas. We will need to bridge a couple of traces with copper wires, but by now we are all experts reconnecting those tiny copper tracks. Luckily we don't have to remove the ASUS chip today. The back of the board is mostly unharmed. There is just this single trace that started corroding. Most other traces are in good condition, except for a few spots I will rework, mainly to ease my conscience. Apart from those issues, I may have to replace the parallel port, since it corroded internally. I don't think it is possible to clean such a sealed connector effectively, therefore it's better to replace it. But now let's start working on the traces next to the ASUS chip and the back of the board. While removing the solder mask, I discovered a few more disconnected traces caused by severe corrosion. But all of them are now reconnected and we are ready to test the board for the very first time. And... Oops! None of those boards worked when I powered them on for the first time. But so far we always found a solution and it shouldn't be different this time. Since the last two boards didn't boot because of a slot 1 connection issue, I tried to reseat the CPU. But there was no change. However, I did notice that the CPU fan did not spin up. That was unexpected, because I thought the fan headers connected the 12V power line of the power supply. 
But this is not the case. I verified this with a multimeter. There is some circuitry between the fan headers and the power supply. So there must be another issue on this board. That the fan is not spinning up is a good hint that we could follow. But before starting to trace the fan connector, I drew on my experience gathered from the previous boards. Board number 1 did not post because of a detached power transistor. This disconnected MOSFET was responsible for a non-working motherboard. And apparently, it is also somehow involved in delivering power to the fan connectors. Surprise, surprise! Board number 4 suffers from the same problem. The solder connection of the same transistor broke and is probably responsible for the fan and the board not working. So let's reattach this component and try again. By the way, I did remove the three capacitors right next to the transistor because they were too close to the large solder pad. Recapping those boards should be a priority anyway, so I see it as a slight head start. Yeah. And it boots. And board number 4 is working, including the fan. The same transistor that prevented board number 1 to boot was also an issue on this board. That begs the question of a design flaw during the manufacturing process. Half of my boards suffered from this problem. I guess we will see if any of the remaining two boards are affected by it too. But hey, four boards are done, two more to go. Like with all previous boards, we need to flash the BIOS, because the current version does not support large hard drives nor is it aware of Pentium 3 CPUs. With an updated BIOS, the board can identify the Pentium 3 and large hard drives are supported as well. All three ISA slots, free from corrosion this time, work and detect my ISA sound card. I tested the board in 3 d Mark 99 using an original Voodoo add-on card. Why you ask? 
Well, that's part of another project I'm working on. But the good news is that the board seems to be working flawlessly. The 3D benchmarks finished without hiccups and Unreal Tournament works too, albeit with a very low frame rate. Now let's talk about the new information I gathered during the past few weeks regarding the possibility of my boards being counterfeits. Of course, the input came from some of you who reached out. First, I want to mention Org866, sorry for any mispronunciation. He wrote the summary on the retroweb for the ASUS P2B in revision 1.04, mentioning the fake boards. He also believes that a dot at the end of the revision number should indicate a genuine P2B. All my 6 P2Bs have the dot at the end of the revision number. You can verify this by watching the first video of this series when I introduce each board. So, are those boards genuine? Fortunately, I got another message from Miguel. He also did some investigative work and found an article written in Chinese telling a story about a transaction involving fake P2B motherboards. If you're intrigued, check out the original article linked in the video description, translate it to your preferred language and read through it. At the end are 4 points that should help you identify P2B clones. Unfortunately, I cannot verify points 1 and 4 because I do not have the original manual or any laser stickers that may have been in the box the boards came in. Point 2 mentions poor quality sockets, capacitors and other components. However, I have no complaints about those. And bear in mind that all boards powered up so far, even though I have not recapped any of them yet. The only capacitors I replaced were the ones next to the detached transistors on boards 1 and 4. But we can verify point number 3. Genuine boards should have a BIOS version sticker under the golden BIOS chip sticker. It may not be 100% proof, but it would support the claim that my 6 boards are genuine. And just by running a finger over the award sticker, I can tell that there is something below. But to be sure, we must look below that sticker. And here it is, the BIOS version sticker. Let me flip this around. P2B9? Hmm, I don't know why there is the number 9 at the end of the board model, but just below is the BIOS version 1006. Exactly what we saw when we powered up the board for the first time. I just can't explain the number 9 behind the model number. With this new information provided to you today, do you believe those boards to be genuine or counterfeit? I'm looking forward to read what you think in the comments. And if you like today's content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And finally, a big shout out to all my Patreons. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.